In this video, I'm going to create a custom function that allows you to deep clone an object in JavaScript. Before we get started, I'll quickly explain why deep cloning is necessary. So let's say there's an object A with the following properties. Now I'll copy the value of A in another variable, let's say B. So B is now a new variable containing the same properties as A. Now let's say I update the language property of B to Python. Now if I console log A and B, you can see the language property of both A and B have been updated to Python, despite of the fact that I had only updated the language property of B here. Well, this actually happens because in this example, I actually made a shallow copy. A shallow copy means that certain sub-values are still connected to the original variable. This is oftentimes problematic since we expect the old variable to have original values and not the changed ones. To resolve this, we need to create a deep copy, which means that all of the values of the new variable are copied and disconnected from the original variable. Now, there are multiple ways to deep copy an object such as using external libraries like Lodash or using different built-in methods in JavaScript. But in this video, I'll show you how to deep copy an object by creating our own custom function. The objective of our custom function should be that changing the values of object B shouldn't change the values in object A. So I'll begin by creating a clone function which takes input as a parameter. This input will be our object A when we invoke it later. Within this function, I'll first write a conditional statement that checks if the input is null or not an object which means it would be a primitive type like a string or number. If the input is either null or not an object, it returns the input itself since there is no need to clone primitive values. This serves as the base case for the recursion I'm about to create. Next, I'll create a value named initial value and initialize it based on whether the input is an array or not. If the input is an array, initial value is set to an empty array. If the input is an object, initial value is set to an empty object. This will be the initial value for the cloned object. Then I'll use the object.keys of input method to get an array of keys from the input object. This array is used to iterate over all the properties of the input object. Then I'll use the reduce method to iterate over the keys and create a new object that is a deep clone of the input object. The initial value here denotes the initial value of the accumulator. So the accumulator will be initialized with an object or an array depending upon the initial value here. So the reduce method here basically accumulates the properties in the accumulator object. Inside the reduce function, for each key in the input object, I'll assign a deep clone of the corresponding value to the same key in the accumulator object. Then I'll call the recursive clone function on each value which ensures deep cloning. So this line will create the same key value from the input object in the accumulator and the new accumulator will hold no reference to the input object making it independent, meaning changing its values won't change the values of the input object. And then finally, I'll return the accumulator object, which is a deep clone of the input object. So the deep clone will occur for every object or array that's encountered while iterating through the input object and it will be added as a completely new entity in the accumulator object. So for this object A, how this function works is, I'm throwing A inside clone and here I'm checking type of, which is obviously an object in this case. And that's why I create this initial value here which will be an object. And then I write object.keys which would give us an array of these three keys. Then I'm looping through these keys one by one and writing it inside our new object. This is just object with this key name for the first iteration. And then I'm calling clone with this input of key which is explodivity in this case. Then when it goes to the first condition, the input which is explodivity isn't an object and therefore it gets returned. Ultimately storing the name property with the value explodivity within this accumulator object. Then the same happens for the second iteration, which is language JavaScript. And then in the third iteration, the array is sent inside the clone function here, the initial value becomes an array, and the object.keys of input refers to the indexes of the array, because object.keys of an array returns an array of indexes. So the reduce method iterates through each of the indexes, then creates a new array, which is the accumulator initial value, and then within this new array or accumulator, the input of key or the input of indexes, which are the individual values within the array, are sent to the clone function, then return from this if condition, and stored within the new accumulator array one by one for each iteration. And this ultimately gives us a deep copy of the object A. So now to verify this, instead of writing B equals A, I'll initialize B as the clone of A. And then I'll change the language and framework's property of object B. And now if I console log A and B, you can see modifying B doesn't modify the object A at all. Which means B now doesn't hold a reference to object A and is a completely new independent object by itself. So this means our clone function was successful in creating a deep copy of object A. 
So that's all for the video. If you found it insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe.